Well, well, well. I'm recording this right after uh, an hour or so um, after the after the final whistle, and um, I mean, the only thing I can say from a PSG perspective is that we were second best. Um, it's not good enough. Um, it was it's an interesting game. I don't think it's the worst PSG performance ever. There were good spells in the game, but overall, I think PSG were second best over the over the game, and that um, Barca are you could argue deserved winners over 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 the game. Um, but I, as I thought, I think it was it was a tight game. Uh, it was a good for for, good for for the neutrals. Um, but I've got my gripes, and overall, I guess I'll say as a neutral, it was a great game. It was a good, it was a good watch. Um, but now coming on to specifically from a PSG perspective, like the first thing I can I have to go and say is that in this first half, especially, um, we seem unbalanced. Like every single time. So I understand that we had basically um, Nuno Mendes go and play really high, almost as a wing back, as a left wing back. The problem was, though, is that then when Barcelona would counter with arguably their most lethal, most dangerous player on the pitch in Lamine Yamal, that it left us it left us exposed. And it meant that our left center back, which in most cases was Baraldo, had to slide over. But then it meant that the, um, the right center back had to slide over to fill for his position, which then meant that the right back would have to slide over, et cetera, et cetera. And that is sort of how... It led to our first goal. Um, and so I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I understand why, because Nuno did does bring a lot of um, uh, a lot of good qualities going forwards. And it was certainly seen, especially also in, in the first half too. But is it worth the hit you take defensively in your organization afterwards? Or at worst, I would say, if you're going to go and do something like that, have a midfielder come back and fill in for his position or cover him into a certain aspect for the counterattacks because it seemed every single time they counterattacked we we felt exposed then another thing that we had that i did not understand whatsoever in the first half is why the heck we were playing such a high line like i understand you want to go and press and so on and so forth but like there was the first time where um they played a ball in behind Baraldo goes and sticks on um uh on uh on Lewandowski, but then the ball goes in behind and um Rafinha's in on goal um, and it wasn't for a, a lucky, good Donnarumma intervention there, which is one of the only good things he did over the night, but we'll get on to that later on. That could have been easily one nil right there. So I don't know why we wanted to play so risque like that and play such a high line right from the get-go. I personally didn't understand that either. Um, but now, speaking of our good old friend Donnarumma, oh my God, he was trash. Trash! Absolute disgusting, man. Like... Um, I don't know, like what's happened, like his where, where his confidence is gone. You know, he was stellar. You know, in the, in the Marseille game, everything was good, and then now to this, like just absolutely terrible. Like you go and you look at all three goals, you can make a case that for every single one of those goals, he's fault. He's faulty on all every single one of them. The first goal is clearly his fault. The ball comes in. Amina Mel goes the counterattack. As I was saying before. It's also due to the fact of the, the defensive shape we had. They go, a ball comes in, he misjudges it, goes for it. It's a low ball, goes for the dive, doesn't get to it first. And then it's an easy rebound. And then it's a, it's a, it's a tidy right foot finish from, from Rafinha. Again, if he doesn't go and dive in like that, maybe, uh, okay, maybe you can argue that Lewandowski maybe gets the shot, throws him off a bit, but he's in goal for, for, for the save. I don't understand that bit. The second goal as well, yes, it's a brilliant finish. Um, it's brilliant finish, brilliant pass from Pedri as well, and brilliant finish from Rafinha. But again, there, it's his um, uh, uh, misplaced uh, um, misplaced pass that goes leads to the interception, and then bang, just like that, they've tied the game up. And that, and especially given that at that point, it was sort of you could argue against the run of play. So those two costly mistakes right there, straight fully on Dalian Room right there, and then the third goal, you could also argue again that like. He's six foot four, six foot five, whatever he is. Why is he not going and claiming balls like that? He should be eating corners every single day. Is he six four? He can jump. In what world is a six foot four keeper or six foot five or what, however tall he is going and um, getting in situations like that where um, uh, the ball's coming in over corners? This is this is this is his bread and butter. It should be his bread and butter. Like I feel like we're seeing the Don room of, of earlier parts of the season where he's just not confident and whatnot. And I don't I don't know I don't know where it came from. Um, Donnarumma was just terrible. And I don't understand. Like I go on sofa score and I see that his, um, uh, the, the rating that he was given, he was given something like, a we're going and I'm seeing that he's getting like a, a 6.5 or so on and so forth. And yada, yada. I'm like, are we watching the same game? So I just go here on sofa score. Um, and he got a rating of 6.2, which granted in fairness is 
the worst amongst the squad, but for me, minimum is like a four. Four out of ten. Yes, he does have that. Um, he does save his blushes a bit in that he made a vital interception um, um, in the in the early parts of the game. But again, not like two two of them clearly his. And on the third goal that they scored, arguably should be able to come out and, and make a claim to it. But I don't know. And then another thing with uh, players specifically that I need to harp on are Mbappe. Oh my, Mbappe! If this is the type of stuff you can leave now, you can leave now. Take your uh, pack your bags and get out of the club. He would. Oh my! This has this has honestly this has to be one of the like worst Mbappe performances I've seen in a long, long time. All right, this is already top three for this season, and he's had bad bad, bad performances this season. Right? This is I argue probably worse than the Monaco one. No dribbles. In fact, okay, I want to see stats. In this game, Mbappe had what? Um, on Sofa Score, they have him at a six point eight. 6.8, nearly a 7 out of 10. What game are they watching? I don't know. Okay, listen, I don't know how Sofa score going about and do so, but he goes 6.8 out of 10. Um, he had what one shot off target, two block shots, so three shots the entire game, four dribbles attempted, only one successful dribble, um, 44 touches the entire game, the fouls, nothing, ground duels won two out of two out of ten, um, aerial duels won one out of ten, possession lost 13 times. He lost the possession. He lost ball possession 13 times. How? This is, this. Is, oh my, this was a terrible Mbappe performance. Like, I, I mean, I guess a good thing you guys, we, we can show from it is that despite an, a, a, a woeful, woeful Mbappe performance, PSG were still able to go and, and to conjure up something and score two goals. Um, but like, M Mbappe had a stinker today. That's all I can say. You know, I'm, I, I don't want to harp on too, too much, you know, but like, and Bobby, second leg, you don't need, you don't need to turn up. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, but other than those two things, I feel like there were spurts in the game. There were moments in the game where PC looked good, in particular, right at at, um, um, at the beginning of the second half, where it seemed like PC were looking like some you know, a different team. You know, a completely different team going scoring two goals in two minutes early in the half as well. It seemed like we were good, but again, that's why I say, and this is where PC needs to like to 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 put us, I guess. What I would feel is to get us into that category in that caliber of your Real Madrid's and, and, and Man City's in that in situations like that where you're two and up, you've got the momentum, you need to kill the game off. You need to kill the game off because as soon if you don't do it, Barca go on a free chance, they go and they score, bang, now it's 2-2 it's, it's two, two, and now everything's to play for. So like I said during the stream, I said it whilst I was watching, it's 2-1. Okay, yes, it's good. We we're able to come back into it, but score another one, finish the game off. We go to Barca and we handle it there. But no, we don't do that. We let him get back into the game. And as they get back into the game, bang, a brilliant chipped um, pass from Pedri and a brilliant finish from Rafinha. It is what it is. Well, I would say, though, I, I do have to say, though, um, in saying that, it's not the worst PSG performance. It's not a good performance. It's a bad performance. Don't get it make twisted. However, I do have to give credit where credit, credit is due. You know, give one to Caesar with the Caesars. Barcelona played very well. I thought their game tactics were very good. Um, uh, 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 Araujo and Koundé, you know, Completely pocketed Mbappe. You got to, you, you, we have to say things frankly here. Completely pocketed Mbappe. Had nothing, couldn't do anything whatsoever. But yeah, had a good defensive plan. Boss the midfield. Gundogan was really good. Lewandowski had, a, I guess, a quiet game. But I guess in in him being quiet, it sort of meant that people like Rafinha could cook us and, and Lamine Yamal as well. So I think overall, I think it's fair to say it, it was a fairly balanced game, a fairly even game. Um, you could say... I'd still say probably, yeah, Barca probably did deserve over, given the 90 minutes in the entirety of the game, to probably win it. Um, but again, your moments from if Barcola goes and finishes his chances, that's your equalizer. Who knows what happened there? If, if Dembele's post shot, if that sneaks in, it's a different game as well. But that's neither here nor there. Um, again, I just wanted to go and say that I think Barcelona played very well. Um, and then I guess positives for, uh, from, from PSG's perspective is that you're now going into the game where Barca, I think, so at Ajo, they were, you had a couple of players on their side who were on yellows. Um, Christensen got a yellow. Did he get a yellow? He did get a yellow, so he's gone for the next game. Um, and so did, um, why am I forgetting his name? Sergio Roberto. So they're not going to be there for the next game. And also PSG are able to get Hakimi back. But it also means that from their Barcelona perspective, you're going to have a Pedri who's got an extra week um, to rest and recuperate. You can have De Jong in there. So um, it's going to be up to PSG now to go to the pa, uh, to to uh, the Olympic Stadium in Barcelona and to to get a, result, a historic result in their case. 
but then after going there, score early. This is what I mean. Like, at least if you get a draw, okay, you could say it's it's fair game. But now you're losing, so you need to go away from home and score. And so now all the pressure is on you. And so it's it's really it's like it's almost the worst case scenario for PSG in this situation. As for second legs, I mean, for Lucho, I'm questioning. I was surprised to see that Kenyon Lee was starting ahead of um of uh, of Warren. Granted, Warren hasn't been in the best of form as of late. But I think, especially for the second leg, like, Warren needs to start. Warren needs to start. Warren needs to start. Especially he came on. I thought he had a really good game. I guess, in fairness, he you could say that he was culpable for for the third goal. But he came on, had was was direct, um, broke lines, was truly in, um, instrumental in in many of the PSG attacks. And so I think he absolutely needs to start. I don't understand Marco Asensio starting there as like the ten sort of kinda. I guess I can understand it from the point that maybe they wanted to. Um, to have an overload in the midfield. But in that point, like he's he's more of an attacking player. So I would have almost rather had Kangan Lee as the 10 and have Warren take his spot to play that the four midfield. But we'll see. Um like from PSG's point, there's there's no excuses. You're at home. You've got basically your, your best squad a, a bar. You know, I guess you could argue Hakimi, you know, being it suspended, but there's no excuses there. Um that's it. Um, I still think we can go to Barcelona and get a result. It's going to be interesting how we approach them the game over the weekend. Um, but certainly, if I was a betting man and I was a neutral, I'd go and say that I think the ball is certainly in um, Barca's favor. Um, but it ain't over till it's over. And uh, we'll have that answer all team mindset. We stay calm, we stay composed, and wish for the best. And uh, with that, thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon. And remember, stay safe, stay kind, stay blessed. Godspeed. <laughs>